morning, everybody, and welcome to the last WTF session for this week. It's been fantastic to spend time with all the Easy Equities users. Neela and I have loved it, and so we appreciate your time. As we mentioned at this last one, we're going to be mainly taking your questions and answering some of the most asked questions during the week. So before I say hello to Neelan, um, please allow me five minutes just to make a few thank yous and to recap some of what we've learned this week. So firstly, obviously, a big thanks to Neelan, uh, who's been a legend, um, and you guys responded really well to, uh, to the information Neelan's given us. A big thanks also to all of you for joining. And we want you to remember from an easy equity side, you are far smarter than you think you are. So trust yourself, read about uh, the platform, um, but you guys really uh, are the ones that, uh, that have the, the knowledge. I also want to say thanks to my teammate Stanwell and Lissetti for helping answering the questions. And also a big thank you to the CNN Co team for hosting uh, on their platform. So then what the F is ending today, but as a reminder, please go to research.easyequities.co.za for free uh, information we put together for you. You can go to support.easyequities.coza for some uh, frequently asked questions. And we are also going to bring back the WTF series in a couple of weeks and answer some more of your questions. So we will do that. All of these are available on YouTube and uh, already thousands of users have watched those. So if you've missed anything, go check out YouTube. So then a very brief recap and then we'll go to questions with Neelan. So as a reminder, all pricing that you see on our site is 15 minutes delayed. That's a very common practice and we do that to keep costs low. But you need to be aware that when you are buying and selling, that you're doing it seeing a 15 minute delayed price. So that's the first thing. Second thing is Neelan helped us understand that when shares are suspended, there's nothing is wrong. That could be a variety of reasons. Companies in liquidation, or he then spent some time telling us the fascinating background to auctions. Um, I, for one, for instance, didn't know that every share goes through an auction on a daily basis. Neelan explained that during the day, there are also at times some intraday auctions, and that would lead to the suspension of shares. Um, so that was some fascinating information. We also spoke a little bit about liquidity, and Neelan explained to us that uh, a share being liquid um, versus not being uh, affected our ability to perhaps buy a certain quantum. And finally, Neelan explained to us the value of a share. So if a share has got a higher RAND value, doesn't necessarily mean it's a more valuable share. There might be some other value and it's worth exploring. So without any further ado, Neelan, we're gonna kick off with you. Good morning and ask you to talk to us a little bit about um, limits. There've been lots of questions about limit buying and stop order and words like that. Can people do that on the site? And tell us a little bit about that. Over to you. Sure. Morning, Carl, and morning to all the guys joining us this morning. And thank you. Uh, thank you for this week. It's been really enjoyable. It's been knowledgeable. Um, and ultimately, you know, that's what we're here for. And, uh, and we'll promote that frequently. And as Carl pointed out, you know, a lot of the information is available through various uh, mechanisms that we have on our website, through the support channels. Please, please, please. It's up there for free and it's there for you. So use it. Um, you know, there's lots of valuable stuff on there. And you, um, you haven't made a mistake yet this week, so please don't disappoint us. Keep your track record today. I'll try hard. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we want to we want to talk about limits, right? And and this is something that came up during the week as well, um, and it relates to the discussion around liquidity. So mm -hmm. what what we do on Easy Equities is we measure the liquidity of each and every stock. Um, our, our risk team does that. And we say, well, you know, if on average a stock trades in 500 shares per trade on exchange, well, we're happy to facilitate trades, for example, in 1,000 shares, and that'll be the limit for that stock. It's, it's not a thumb suck. Um, there's science behind it, and it's, uh, it's a mathematical uh, value that we use and a formula that we use to calculate that. And effectively, all we're saying is that relative to the liquidity of that specific stock, this is what we prepared to allow you to trade. And importantly, please note, it is not a position limit. It is a ticket limit. And what I mean by that is if, let's say, you want to do um, 5,000 Rand worth of exposure to a specific stock and the limit is two, 
Well, you can do two, you can do another two, and you can do one to get to your 5,000. And it's also to ensure that you, you know, on each of those executions, that you're getting access to the current price at that time. Cool. So, Neil, next up, I want to ask you a question around Bitcoin. And just to remind everybody that Neil and I aren't here to provide any advice. We want to repeat that you are the people best equipped to make a decision for yourself, taking into account your own circumstances. There is no right or wrong. There is getting information, applying it to your own circumstances, and believing in yourself. But, Neil, and Bitcoin, can I buy Bitcoin on the Easy Equities platform? So you can't buy Bitcoin directly. However, you can get exposure to Bitcoin through another very innovative product that we have called DCX10 tokens. Okay? And this is an index of cryptocurrencies um, with its highest weight naturally being in Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the largest market cap. And I know you're going to pick on that, but we did discuss market capitalization. Um, so what these guys have done is they've created an index and an index for, for, for those that want to know is simply a basket of different assets. Um, there's a method that they use in terms of facilitating the participation of each individual asset and what that individual asset's weight is in the index. So Bitcoin, for example, within the DCX token is something like 75%, and then it's spread out, the balance is spread out amongst the other uh, cryptocurrencies. So you can get exposure to Bitcoin via the DCX uh, token. So just to make sure I understand, there's more than one cryptocurrency. So we've taken Bitcoin and a bunch of cryptocurrencies. They're all together in a basket, which is diversification, which you've also spoken about. And yes. I can get exposure or buy that. And it's a DCX on our platform. Correct. And there are 10, there are 10 constituents to that, hence the name DCX10. But diversification is, is perhaps key, uh, you know, the key point to make there. Cool. So just as a reminder for those who are asking about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is generally recognized and cryptocurrencies are generally recognized to be a more risky investment. Um, so read, there's lots of information on cryptocurrencies on our site. There's lots of information from the team at DCX about explaining the value of cryptocurrencies. Um, and for those of you that are interested, there was also some content about the recent halving uh, and the price setting on the Bitcoin. Uh, and still something that I think is worth exploring. So we can check that out. Um, Neelan, somebody's asking us TFSA or money in an emergency fund. Now, again, you can't necessarily make a call because it's different for each person. But what's the value of a tax-free savings account? So, you know, my personal opinion of this, right, is that every, um, every person should aim to exhaust the tax-free savings account limit first before anything else. And, you know, I'll, justif I'll justify that. Unless somebody tells me that they enjoy paying tax, well, then that's fine. You know, if you prefer paying tax, then that's fine. Don't do it. But... Um, to date, I haven't met a single person that would prefer paying tax, right? So um, the, the other reason I'm making the point is that a tax-free savings account does not mean that the money is not accessible. In an emergency, you can still access it. Um, but rather have, you, you know, and this year they've upped that limit from 33,000 per year per individual to 36,000 per year per individual with the lifetime cap still remaining at 500,000. So, um, you know, in, investors for themselves, certainly, but if you've got kids, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't be topping up that tax-free savings account. Uh, the universe that's available. So we have had some questions around what can I buy in the tax-free savings account? Sorry, Neela, just before you explain that, which I think will be useful, I just want to say to the users, in my experience engaging with thousands of you guys, that when somebody like Neela talks about 36,000 as a limit, we think, gee, slack. Like who the hell's got 36,000 bucks, particularly in these, and then we switch off. But we've got a number of users, young people, one actually works with me and I'm very inspired by, by this individual, who diligently save and squirrel away little by little and really try and get as close to that limit as they can during the year. And they sacrifice a whole bunch of stuff. This particular individual loves fashion and gadgets and he compromises on those. And we've done some research looking at the investments our, our users are making in the tax-free savings account. 
And because, as I've said, many of them are so smart, young people that are really squirreling away and trying to, to put as much as way as they can in the tax-free savings account are going to be way better off, Neelan, than old people like you and me in the future in terms of retirement. It a is absolutely what compound investment does. Uh, it's really One, awesome. what, Yeah, 100%. You know, the benefit, um, the benefit of time is often ignored in this. It's, we, we touched a little bit about uh, the investment horizon, you know, are you, uh, and whilst that determines to a large degree whether you're a trader or an investor, um, yesterday we looked at a chart, um, and I'm not sure if you remember, but the five-year period between 2010 and 2015 yielded a 100% return. You know, yes. so when you have time on your side, um, that's a that's a big benefit, a big benefit. So you're not, uh, you know, you're not, you don't have to view these things daily. Um, tax free savings allows allows for that. Um, onto the universe within that tax free savings account, and and yes, you you're 100 percent right. You know, whilst the limit is 36,000, it doesn't mean you have to do the 36,000. Do as much as you can, but try and fulfill that first before looking at other investments. Mm -hmm. um, so the universe is dictated to us by National Treasury. Um, and again, you know, the theme around diversification features. So they've only allowed ETFs, so exchange traded funds. And I think we're going to do a session about that at some stage coming. So, you know, users need to, to keep an ear out uh, onto our tags for, for releasing about that. But uh, I mean, they, they're wonderful products and um, a cheap and easy diversified entry into the market. So we'll go into a lot of detail about that at some point. But the, 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 the justification for the reasoning behind ETFs within the tax-free savings account is largely around diversification, is that you're not buying a single asset. You're not buying a Steinoff and potentially putting your retirement or savings money into a single counter that can fall 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 percent. Um, and so, you know, uh, you can hold cash in there. You're not forced to invest it. Um, but as long as you have it within the tax-free savings uh, account, everything you earn on there, be it interest, be it returns, be it dividends, all of that is completely tax-free. Thank you, Neelan. And I want to remind people of something that I said earlier this week is that Easy Equities is not a casino. So if you want to you know, gamble, this is not the place. And investment is not a casino either. It takes time. And the sooner you start, the better, but it's never too late to start. Um, and so, yes, you're not going to get rich overnight um, necessarily, but you're also not going to lose the shirt of your back overnight. So start. So Neelan, I want to ask a question around bonds. Can we buy bonds on the platform? You spoke a little bit about bonds in a way that government issues bonds to, to uh, raise cash. Can we buy bonds on, this, on the platform? So again, uh, you can't buy a bond directly. Um, that typically happens between the, the big uh, finance houses, so typically between the banks. Um, however, there are, there are products to give you bond exposure. Most recently, Satrix um, listed a bond ETF, um, and there is an existing new funds, which is issued by uh, APSA, new funds Gavi, which is also a bond ETF. And again, you know, you, and, and users will start seeing the similarity come through in this, this, these discussions around diversification. So it's not a single bond that you're buying, but you are buying an index that it, that comprises different bonds with different yields and different maturities. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, you're spreading the risk over over period. So there are, um, yeah, perhaps you know, two instruments to look at to start with is the Satrix Bond ETF and the new funds Gavi ETF, and both again, available on, on Easy Equities, obviously. Yeah. And then on the site, we've got research from, from an independent company like Intellidex that looks at each ETF and gives you views on past performance, perhaps future um, plans, and that will help users make up their mind. We also have an Easy ETF platform, which um, has got a wealth of information. Um, and the guys update that you know, regularly. Um, so check out Easy ETF. As a matter of interest, more than 50% of what gets bought on the Easy Equities platform is now ETF. It's not individual shares. So our users really like ETFs and are buying more and more. 
Neil, I want to ask um, you to chat a little bit about Dirk's question. Um, and um, sorry, I'm going to get back to, to Dirk. I wanted to do the one about property and rates. We've got some great questions here. So there's a question here about listed property companies um, on the JSE. They have suffered a lot, obviously. Um, what are the possibilities of the listed property companies losing their rate status? And rate is R-E-I-T. And I think you can maybe correct my pronunciation and explain to people what that is, because it's a term that oaks like you throw around thinking the rest of us know about. Yeah, it's called a REIT, um, is, uh, is how they pronounce it. Um, and and it, essentially, it stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. Um, and the, the, the reason some people uh, switched uh, from an ordinary listing into a REIT is, uh, is, is, is largely, you know, fundamental reasons around taxation, etc. Um, and their, their ability to distribute uh, dividends, another topic that we covered this, this week. Um, they've, they've come down a lot. Um, you know, the user is 100%, right? In, in some cases, 70% um, or more uh, in terms of this move lower. And, you know, what, what this pandemic has highlighted is the requirement for physical office space. And so, you know, they've remained under pressure because a lot of people have now questioned what happens. Uh, how, how these companies actually make money is basically on the basis of rental income. So they own, they own this portfolio of buildings. They, they lease out those buildings or rent those buildings out. And their income is derived from rental income. Um, naturally, there will be escalation in that rental, and that awards uh, holders of these companies to receive dividends because you have to believe that the, the, the sum of the rent that you get in is greater than the amount that you've got to pay the bank for the bond or the mortgage against the building. And that difference results in a profit. And after cost, that, those profits are dis uh, distributed to shareholders. Um, the attraction around property companies largely have been about the yield, the dividend yield, and we touched on that during the week as well. And they've been known to be some of the highest paying, uh, highest yielding companies or listings on the exchange, and hence the attraction. So lots of people have bought into that. People, you know, people are nervous about the situation we're in. People are nervous about whether there is a need for physical property anymore, and so that. That historical dividend yield of anywhere between seven percent and ten percent um, comes into question, and hence, you know, the move lower because people are questioning whether they're going to be able to deliver that going forward. Cool. Thanks very much, Neilan, and thanks to all you guys who've stuck with us this week. Today's session feels to me a little bit uh, more intense than the previous four days, but I think uh, we've probably all been educated a bit. Um, there's a question around easy equities going into other African markets, uh, including Botswana, Rwanda, Nigeria, and Ghana. Just to say that uh, we absolutely are exploring those options, um, but our immediate plans are first to um, start going in Australia, which is imminent, um, both for Australians to enjoy the benefits of an easy equities platform and also for us to have exposure to Australian shares. Um, but we are. We've, uh, we've had a couple of our team members uh, meet with regulators, exchanges, brokers, and um, people in the investment industry in a couple of African countries. And as a proudly African company itself, Easy Equities, it's definitely something we'll, we'll look at. I want to touch on Heno's question. Heno is 15 years old and uh, is one of the thousands of stories that we get uh, that inspire us on a daily basis. Heno, as I said, 15 years old, um, and his combined portfolio in his US and ZA accounts are 25% plus which he knows way more than most established financial advisors, by the way. So uh, just goes to show. So well done. He has got a question around why his uh, parents need to sign surety. And Heno, I'm going to give you the short answer here. Easy Equities is heavily regulated and happily so um, by JSE, by the FISCA, the overall financial regulator. And we have compliance people and legal people that work with us. And they give us a very hard time. Again, rightfully so. They check and make sure that whatever we want to do on the platform, A, is legal, and B, will make sure that you as an investor is always protected and that your cash is safe. So any of the rules we have are put there by our compliance and legal people to make sure that your money is, is, always, uh, is always safe. Um, Neilan, any insights on why the supermarket stocks are taking a bit of a beating? 
sure. They operate in retail. Um, I mean, have you been out over this period to... I've been out twice only, and it was a little bit freaky for me, so hardly at all. Yeah, yeah, and I, it wasn't to a hairdresser, because I can see you did that yourself or at home. But, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> listen, there's... Uh, <laughs> anyway, answer the question. Yeah, they, um, you know, they. to my mind, there are very few, they're very few retailers that can sustain um, their businesses with six to eight weeks of limited inflow. Um, you know, these, these businesses operate on, on thin margins, uh, often single digit percentage uh, margins, but they rely on volume. And when nobody, when they don't have the foot traffic and nobody's entering their stores and buying like they used to, um, that's that's a problem. We've already see, seen a few of them withhold their dividends as a result. Um, and that's that's another thing uh, from an investment perspective that one needs to consider. Um, and it's not it's not uh, you know unnatural for people during times of uncertainty to to withhold their investment. That's the reason they're coming lower. I mean, people are worried about the fact that you know no one is spending with them or pe or there's limited people spending with them. Um, the other side of the equation still stands true from their side, the expense side. You know, they've they still got to buy stock, they still got to cover rent, etc. But the inflows are are limited at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to um, have a blanket answer here to some of the questions that we're getting. Guys, trust yourself and go to support.easyequities.co.za. The majority of these questions are covered quickly and easily in the support. Um, and so check out the questions there, get your answer, um, and uh, it would really help you if you go to support.co.za. Uh, um, sorry, support.easyequities.co.za. It's really difficult to get through all these questions. I want my team to close the ones that we're answering um, so that we can get to them. Um, but Neelan, in the meantime, can you tell me on a Friday, is there anything particular that's different about a market? Not is uh, every day the same. Is there a best, better day to buy or sell? No, not really. Not really. People have tried to time that. I mean, what we do find is that the shorter term uh, traders often don't want to hold positions. And, and again, the, you know, I have to differentiate between trading now and investing. But in, on the trading space, uh, oftentimes what you'd find is that um, people who have held positions during the week and are uh, holding positions overnight don't particularly want to hold positions over a weekend. So there's a lot of position squaring going on in the trading world that normally happens into the close on a Friday. Um, and, and the reason for that is that the longer you hold uh, you know, positions where you can't do anything about them, the, oftentimes the more the risk or the more the gain. You don't know which way it's going to go, but anything could happen over the weekend. And hence, we see a bit of activity uh, happening on a Friday into the close. But from an investment perspective, no, not really. There's not, there's not major difference, nor a favorite time to choose. Cool. French was asking us a question around um, a reporting for dividends, etc. Um, and specifically around uh, his tax. Uh, he's only been using his tax-free savings account and he's asking, is it easy to report? So Neelan, you can do some quality control on my answer here, but simplistically, Easy Equities takes care of all of this. Um, there are monthly statements that are available uh, a couple of uh, weeks after the, pre the previous month, which details all the activity within your various accounts. And on an annual basis, we provide you with your tax certificate uh, and the information that you require to, to do your tax returns. So we take care of all of that. And simplistically, if a dividend is pay out, paid out, we withhold the tax before we pay it out. So it's really a seamless and easy process. Is that about right? 100% correct, yeah. So we, we do all the administration around that. We, uh, there's an obligation on, on us as a financial services provider to report to, to SARS also. And the data that's contained in that annual tax statement that you refer to uh, will correspond to what we've already reported to SARS. Uh, and that just needs to be incorporated into his normal tax return. Cool. A question on safety and security on the site. Just to repeat that all client money and assets not held by Purple or by Easy Equities. Uh, it is held what Neelan calls a nominee account. 
And in my language, it just means that somebody else or another entity has got all the cash assets of our users and it's completely safe and protected within that structure. And again, regulated, audited, checked, um, so 100%, 100% safe. Neelan, somebody is wanting you to speculate a little bit about whether the full opening of the economy will improve the share prices. Um, so is, is it possible to say that? Yeah. Um, because it's an opinion that uh, that's cool, and I, and I think it it will. I think you know we mustn't uh, underestimate the the degree that uh, uh, perception plays in terms of the pricing of assets. If everybody thinks a certain way, then the market will react a certain way, and and that's driven by perception. And so the perception that we have currently, which we've just touched on when we spoke about the retailers, is that there's a perception that they're not doing any business or they're doing limited business, hence the market is responding by pricing them lower. When that changes, so, you know, when when this current lockdown ends, I, I don't foresee, the, uh, you know, the same level of activity returning to pre-lockdown. However, it'll certainly be more than what we're seeing now. So that perception will drive prices up again. So I think I think that's a fair assumption that you know, as as people are able to mobilize again and get back to almost normal, um, you know, the market will perceive that as good for retailers, and those prices should start recovering. Yeah, and we also uh, have seen a number of uh, listed companies that have done well during lockdown, either because of the business that they were in or because they've pivoted and developed a new way of doing business. So uh, that should also improve. Um, and, um, oh no, Francois said that I'm wearing a certain cap. This is easy equities, Francois, definitely not what you're suggesting. Um, I, uh, we've got a question here, Neelan, about, will what do we think about the future of Purple Group shares? And Purple Group is the, uh, company that owns, uh, easy equities alongside Sunlum that owns 30% of easy equities. Um, and so unfortunately, Marinki Beloy, thanks for that question, but we, uh, we have no idea, it would be speculation, um, but uh, we are all very passionate about what we're doing and we're less focused on the share price and more focused on helping 400,000 plus users, including all of us are users, to uh, have a better experience and to, to invest and, and uh, yeah, and that's what we focused on day after day. Um, but uh, you might be interested, a guy called Junior Buffett uh, on Twitter, published an article that he wrote some research um, and he did it yesterday. So it's at Junior Buffett and he's sharing some insights about what he thinks about Purple Group and uh, where he thinks the share will go. And you might find that uh, interesting. We've got a couple of people that are asking again about the share price, Neelan, and about if I buy at the price I see, is that the price that I'm going to be filled at? So I'm going to answer this question so that you can do quality control to see if I've learned. So the price that I see is 15 minutes delayed. Um, right. And the reason for that is to make sure that we keep costs down. I should also check that the price that I'm looking at for the ask and the sell, how big a difference that is. And the bigger the difference, then maybe there should be some warning bells in terms of the liquidity or the availability for me to buy and sell those. But in theory, the price that I see should be pretty close to what I get filled at, barring lots of volatility in the market. So it's not because Easy Equities is trying to do anything strange. It's simply to keep costs down. And in a market where a share is not overly volatile, that price should be pretty much similar to what I see. Correct? Absolutely correct. The only thing I'll, I'll you know, to summarize that, I'll, what I would say is that whilst you view a 15-minute delayed price, your execution happens at the live price. So, you know, that's the only thing I want to add to that, but you're spot on. And also, Neelan briefly mentioned, we've got some functionality uh, that we're testing and will be available for all where you'll be able to get a, a, a snapshot price. So that would be a more up-to-date price. Um, and maybe just to talk about functionality on the site. We um, have a, we spend the majority of our money on, um, apart from the salaries of our team, on um, development and we develop based on feedback from users and the data that we see. And we then prioritize um, what we do. And so, you know, if one or two people want something, it's not a high priority. But if lots of people want, we look at it. 
also if it's causing a pain point for lots of people we we look at fixing it um, and so every Thursday morning we have a release of new features on the site and so some of you will see that the site is down before market open um, and that's when we are releasing these deploys uh, and uh, our development team are absolutely phenomenal all of them are also users and they take what they do very very seriously um Neelan, we've got a question here around um opening an account for your daughter so to say you can absolutely whether she's four or even younger uh, we've got clients that are a couple of months old and we've got clients that are in their 90s all the details for opening these accounts support.easyequities.co.za check it out all the information is there um here we go Neelan. a question we've had a lot can easy equities add stop limits so again, I mean, you know, this is, this is, we've had a few people ask us, um, this is largely going to be around the development that's required. I mean, there's a, there's a complex uh, bit of logic that needs to go into that. We have discussed it internally and we will continue discussing it. Um, just, you know, just touching around the development side of things. I mean, uh, snapshot pricing is coming. That will be next. Uh, in the pipeline behind that would be limit orders and these are entry orders so not exit orders and I can only imagine that the natural progression from there would be these exit orders you know um, so yeah all, all being discussed uh, I can't give you a timeline um, but it's definitely on the radar and as soon as we can get them onto the platform we will hmm. Cool. And Louis, you would have noticed gaps because that is what happens in an auction at times. So uh, Louis, you can see the question that Elon relates to auction and that there might be a bigger difference between ask and bid during an auction. Um, I um, want to ask you, Neelan, do you personally invest? Yes, I do. Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, I have been for a while. In fact, uh, when both my kids were born, both of them got easy equities accounts, um, you know, and I continually try and match that limit for them as well every, every year. Um, and so I, I, I truly believe, and I'm passionate about that, you know, I truly believe that in 15 years time, once we reach the cap, uh, you know, I've got something to give them. Um, and not necessarily that that was done for me, but I want to be able to do that for, for them. So yes, I absolutely do. And any spare cash that I have, uh, you know, gets, in, gets invested. Nilan, great question. Yeah, who participates in auctions? Who are responsible for making the bids and offers? So, so market, market participants are typically people who have direct market access. Predominantly, that's going to be the larger stockbrokers. Um, and either working orders for themselves or working orders on behalf of their clients uh, and banks. I mean, those are those are the typical participants in the market. If you look at if you look at the volumes that go through, that would suggest that on its own. I mean, the, you know, the largest trades that happen happen during that auction or as a result of that auction. So, so banks and big stockbrokers trying to screw us over. No, not at all. The, the purpose of the auction is exactly to avoid that. The purpose of the auction is to, um, in a fair manner, disclose and come to an, uh, a closing price or an opening price that is not manipulated. That's the entire purpose of that auction. Hmm. Shane's asking us if we're planning to lower our cost because of growth in numbers. Shane, maybe uh, the short answer is no, and the long answer is uh, Easy Equities has uh, been running... Uh, at a loss intentionally for a couple of years as we built up to volumes. Um, so we are still by far the cheapest way that you can buy uh, and sell shares and participate in the stock market. Um, and uh, it is very, very, very low. Um, and so if we start doing that, then we will have to start charging users for other functionality and what have you, like the research and other stuff that's free, which is definitely not what we're wanting to do. Um, Heno's asking us if we've considered putting um, Alan Gray funds on the platform, Neelan, and maybe you can answer that by explaining a little bit what's available in the RA account that users have. And so, to remind users, everybody who's got a ZAR account, for the, uh, shares in South Africa, your TFSA account, your USD account, and also your RA account. So, is Alan Gray available there? Will it be? 
and uh, yeah, and we've also in the process of launching our wealth division, which will incorporate a lot of these external funds. Um, so I know in the pipeline at the moment, there's five or six funds that are being prepped to be loaded. I'm not sure if Alan Gray is one of them specifically, um, but uh, Craig on our side, you know, right, heads that up, and he's he's been working to get that up and running. So yeah, uh, you listen, keep keep an eye on the space because there will be more wealth type of instruments being being available to users, um, and it's definitely part uh, part of what we want to build out going forward. Great. Cool, Neilan, we've gone over time. I'm getting subtle ends that we have to end. So uh, in conclusion, to say a very big thank you to all the Easy Equities users. You guys are amazing. Trust yourself. Do the research. Read about it. Don't think that other people know more than you do. You are uh, an exceptional investor if you're on the platform already. Big thanks to Neilan for your input and advice. Um, Neilan also gives um, input via our research portal, so check that out, research.easyequities.co.za. We've got a couple of other really smart people that are contributing there uh, from Easy Equities and also externally. So please check it out. Um, look on our social media. Um, the city and the guys are passionate about putting information there. Um, and a big favor from my side, please. Read support.easyequities.co.za. Your questions generally can be answered there quickly and efficiently. Um, so check it out. All the information from this week's What The F series is on YouTube. Um, and so if you've missed anything, please check it out there. Then the last thing before I hand over to Neilan for concluding thoughts is have a brilliant weekend and happy investing. Over to you, Neilan. Yeah, also a very big thank you to everybody that participated this week. Thank you for the for the questions. Uh, thank you for the participation. Thank you for the interest and thanks for your support. Um, you know, as we mentioned during the week, we we are all learning stuff every single day. Please don't ever stop learning. As Carl suggests, read. There's lots of information there for free. It's not going to cost you a cent. It just costs you time and there's, I would imagine during this period, there's no excuse for that. I mean, everybody's uh, got a bit of extra time on their hands, so please use it wisely. And yeah, continue investing and happy investing. And now we'll let Neilan get back to his screens and the sexual moment that he enjoys looking at all of us. So good luck, Neilan. Cheers, everybody. Thank you very much. Cheers, then.